Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We're going to create an awesome glitch logo animation. You can do this with any titles or it doesn't have to be for logos, but we're just going to do this for a logo because we can, right? So this video is awesome. It's going to be like a top of the line glitch effect. We're going to do a lot of cool things in here. It's going to be a lot of great techniques for you guys to take away from this video. And the key word I want to focus on here is there's a lot of ways to do a glitch effect. To narrow down the tons of glitch effects out there and to look for exactly what you're looking to create or looking to put your logo into, head over to Video Hive. My links are in the description to check out these 1300 glitch logo uh, templates that you can just drag and drop your titles and logo and you can render it out and you can have the exact glitch animation that you want. R remember there's tons of ways to do a glitch animation and I highly suggest going over here to check out all the different types of glitch effects so you can find what works for you. And of course if you're in time crunch these templates will save you a ton of time and you're going to have the top of the line result. If you like any of these glitch demos that you're seeing right now you go ahead and check our top five links in the description for our favorite glitch effect templates. So let's go ahead and jump in our video and let's get started. So I already have my text and logo in here and you can do one or the other, doesn't really matter, but once you have your contents in here, make sure you go to layer pre-compose and you name this layer placeholder. Now what I suggest doing if you have a colored logo, mine is just going to be white for this tutorial. If you have a colored logo, what I suggest doing is duplicating the placeholder here by going up to edit, duplicate and come over to about three to four seconds, hit here and keyboard for opacity and just uh, keyframe this to fade on from zero to 100%. So this way, if you have any colors in your logo and text, you'll be able to retain that color towards the end and that's very important. So now this is done here, we can pre-compose both of these layers and we'll just call it placeholder fade. So let's work on our full logo first, go up to layer new solid and we can call this one logo noise map and I spelled noise wrong and go to effect noise and grain fractal noise and here let's increase the contrast and let's add a keyframe for the evolution and let's go here to the end of our timeline and we can set this up to maybe 2x so now you'll have this going on here and let's change the fractal type to dynamic progressive and now let's go here to toggle switch the modes and set the track map for our placeholder to Luma map. So now this is going to take the, you know, our size of our logo here, right? And that looks cool. Now towards the end here, we want this to become a solid white. So what we can do is add a keyframe for brightness, come here to the end here and increase this all the way up to is pure white like this. So if you hit U on your keyboard, you can see the keyframes and it's kind of just doing this. And yeah, you know, that's very important. And I also would like this to kind of fade on as well. So We'll come here to maybe like two seconds, add a keyframe, and come here to the beginning and just lower the uh, brightness down all the way to this pure black. So now it'll kind of just fade on. And, you know, that's cool. So let's go to Effect Distort. And let's add Turbulent Displace, one of my favorite effects. And let's increase the amount by a lot. And also the size. We'll do that to like 200. And let's go back to the last keyframe over here for the evolution. And let's really increase this to maybe like 15 or so or 20. And... Now we should have something like this nice and crazy movement going on here. And trust me, this will set up the, the glitch a little bit later, but now the full logo is done and that looks really cool. And what I was just doing, maybe take both these layers and offset them in time a little bit. So now we can start working on the stroke of this effect and boom, that looks cool. Okay, so now let's duplicate our placeholder here and now let's go to effect generate Vegas. All right, we're going to Las Vegas guys. So let's go ahead and move this layer to the beginning of our timeline. So first things first, let's go to the rendering over here and set this blend mode to transparent so we have the stroke here and we can see what we're doing. We can decrease the number of segments here to all the way to one to make this kind of like a straight line and that looks good. And I want to keyframe the length so it kind of comes on from nothing. So we add a keyframe for length at the beginning of your timeline. And let's go here to maybe, you know, a second or so and we can increase the length just by a little bit, not all the way. And you can check on random face so it can be a little bit random. And let's come here to the color, set this to white. We can increase the width a little bit if you want this to be a little bit thicker. Increase the hardness all the way to one so you can be completely you know, visible. Increase the midpoint opacity all the way and also the end opacity. All right, so now we should have our first effect. And then let's also add a keyframe for rotation at the beginning. And we'll move here to maybe five seconds and we can just rotate this by a little bit. So there'll be somewhat of a rotation to this. And that looks cool. And then let's go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and let's add a CC Radial Fast Blur. And I'm just going to keep it at this. So I have a little bit of blur to this, and that looks cool. 
and I want to add a keyframe for the amount and I want to move forward in time to maybe two seconds and I want to like lower this a little bit so the effect becomes a little bit less intense towards the middle end of this and that looks cool and now what we can do is we can duplicate this I shall rename this layer to Vegas and what we want to do is scrub to the uh, last brightness keyframe and we're going to want to just split this layer and delete it so you can go up to split layer and you can split that up and to make sure that the last frame is ending right here and that should be cool and now let's come over here let's duplicate Vegas and let's hit U on keyboard for the keyframes and let's offset the rotation by a little bit so we'll have multiple streams of Vegas here and go to the last keyframe and we can increase that as well and you can see a little before and after we have the Vegas happening there and that looks cool and once again we'll duplicate this and we'll of course offset the rotations a little bit so we can fill this in a little bit more so we just set up the entire logo here for success to create this unique glitch effect and you're probably thinking where is the glitch effect where's the distortions where's the RGB effect well we're gonna start working on it now let's work on the distortions go to layer new solid and we can call this one uh, noise and we can call this one random noise map let's go to effect noise and grain and fractal noise and this is a life-saving effect and first things first let's set this up to progress dynamic progressive like I like let's increase the contrast and then let's alt click the stopwatch for evolution and let's type in time star uh, 600 and you should have this evolution going on here. And now we want to go to Effect, Stylize, and we want to add Mosaic. And let's click on Sharp Colors. And let's increase the horizontal blocks all the way to maybe over 100. And let's go to Effect, Distort, and we'll add another Turbulent Displace. And we'll increase the amount. And we'll bring down the size. And make sure we set the vertical blocks all the way down to 1 so we just have this map like this. Okay. And let's go back into our main comp. And when you're done here, make sure to pre-compose this noise map. And we'll keep the same random noise map. Click OK. Go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. Go to Effect, Distort, and Displacement Map. And we'll go to the Displacement Map Layer and set this to Random Noise Map. And now this is where the fun begins. Let's go ahead and hit Alt on Keyboard for Max Horizontal Displacement. Type in Wiggle. Open parenthesis, 2, comma, 60 close parenthesis and let's just copy the expression and we'll alt click the stopwatch for max vertical displacement paste that expression in there and now we'll have this glitch distortion effect going on and you know that looks pretty interesting so now it's starting to distort a little bit let's go ahead and create our own custom distortion map so we'll create a new comp and we call this one uh, distortion map and click OK. And from our own custom distortion map, we can get very precise here by grabbing the rectangle tool, and making sure you click the word fill, set this to solid color, click the word stroke, and set this to none. And we can draw out these random rectangles in here. And we can really go crazy with it. So, you know, it doesn't have to be anything consistent. You just do something completely random. And then when you're done, go over like five frames. You can split the layer, delete it, and maybe this time we'll do like horizontal. And really want to be precise in the middle here because obviously this is going to take the form of our logo. And then we'll trim this up, move over five frames, and we'll split this. And if you want to get really customized with it, you can continue this format. But for me, I'm just going to grab both these layers, duplicate them, bring them to the top, move them over. And I'm going to kind of create this staircase all the way across to the end of our composition here. So that should be more than enough. So now we'll go back into our main comp and we can bring in the distortion map. And of course, we'll want to hide it. We'll put it on top here. And what we'll do is duplicate the adjustment layer. And we'll come here to the source and make sure we set this to the distortion map. So now we have the new distortion map in here. So towards the end here, I want the distortion obviously to stop because our logo will continue to distort like this. And I don't want that. So what we're going to do is towards the end here, uh, we're going to hit T on our keyboard for opacity, lower the opacity on both these adjustment layers. We'll move forward to five seconds and lower down the opacity all the way to 0%. So this way it'll kind of just stop moving and then you have your solid logo at the end all right so now you're like where is the color where is the rgb effect where can i actually do this so now since we're done here we'll grab all of our layers pre-compose them and now we call this one color glitch 
and now we'll go to effect channel and grab shift channels and we want to take green from set this to full off and blue full off duplicate this layer set the red off to full off set the green to green duplicate the layer full off or green and set the blue to blue and kind of arranges to RGB so boom so this is bottoms blue top middles green and top is red and we just got to offset these by a little bit so this way now you'll have that full color within a couple of seconds if you scroll through this you see that the colors are you know a little bit too saturated so grab the top two layers here and set the blend mode to screen or you can even do add light and whatever you prefer I'm gonna set it to screen and now these colors blend very nicely together and now you have this amazing uh, glitch effect in here and now that we're basically wrapping up let's go ahead and build this into a larger scene so let's go to layer new solid and let's call this one background and let's go to effect generate gradient ramp and let's set this to like a nice dark blue color and grab the eyedropper tool select that blue color and set it all the way down to like a very dark dark blue like almost black and set the and set the ramp shape to radial ramp and we'll put this layer underneath and now we have a nice background for our logo and now let's go to layer new adjustment layer make this at top and go to effect stylize glow and we'll come here lower down the glow threshold also the radius by a little bit and you know the intensity go down by a touch as well actually maybe we'll raise up the threshold by a little bit yeah so it adds a little bit more color to our glitch here if you if you will I'll actually bring down the intensity by a little bit more and also the radius to about like three for the radius. And then towards the end here, I'll just hit T on my keyboard for opacity and we'll lower down the opacity of the glow effect here. So this is basically our glitch effect in a nutshell and you have it on your logo and basically you have these great techniques to kind of glitch it in a very high end way, if you will. I have a quick plugin over here called Montage Library and I really love this plugin. I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the description. And essentially what Montage Library is, it has over 750 preset effects from camera movements, to color correction, to distortions, to light leaks, uh, to time effects, transitions, and it has a cool folder in here called Chromatic. And this is basically a nice way to, to enhance your distortions with this plugin. And basically all I can do here is find a distortion that I like. So maybe I like uh, Glitch Extra 3 here. And I'll go to the beginning of our timeline, I'll click on apply. So now I have this extra distortion like added within a couple of seconds and this is awesome. So for this I can just hit T on my keyboard for opacity if I want this to kind of fade out a little bit. So maybe we'll set this down to 25% and the effect becomes a little bit less intense towards the end and that's exactly what we want. So montage library is a really cool way to enhance your motion graphics within a couple of seconds. So go ahead and check out my link in the description to learn more about montage library and of course Go ahead and check out my full review on Montage Library. That link's in the description as well. And after a quick preview, here is our full glitch effect. And it looks really cool and ready to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And able to take away several techniques from this video to create this awesome glitch effect. And remember to check out the templates like we talked about at the beginning of the video. Where you can get some inspiration and examples for glitch effects. And also, if you're looking to save time, go ahead and purchase it. Because they are really well made and ready to go. And they will save you that extra time that you may not have. So go ahead and check the links in the description. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to drop a like because it helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. Please hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be creative.